there are approximately 36,000 people registered to take the June LSAT, double the number who took the June LSAT last year, but you don't have to be one of them. There are only a couple weeks left till the test. Don't rush it if you won't be ready in time. Of course, I know a lot of you out there are stressed about the changes with logic games being removed, with the June LSAT being the last test containing the logic games, but know that you can conquer the LSAT with or without logic games on your test. Personally, I struggled a lot with logic games back when I was studying, but I also struggled a lot with logical reasoning and reading comp. For those who don't know me, my name is Steve Schwartz. I improved my LSAT score from a 152 cold diagnostic to a 175 on test day, and I've been teaching the LSAT since 2005. Today, I wanted to share with you some of the benefits of delaying your LSAT until after the June test with just the logical reasoning and reading comp sections on the LSAT going forward. You're going to have two additional months to study if you take the LSAT in August rather than taking it in June. August LSAT scores come back August 28th, which means you could take the LSAT in August and apply to law school at the beginning of the cycle. The second applications open in September. Law school apps typically open September 1st or September 15th, but applying early matters a lot less than it used to, meaning you could take the LSAT any of August, September, October, or November and still apply perfectly early in the cycle. You could even take the LSAT in January and February and you would not be too late. Applying early matters a lot less than it used to. It's okay to apply a lot later than a lot of folks out there would have you believe. And of course, the new LSAT format is going to be a lot simpler now that Logic Games is no longer going to be on the test. You're only going to have two types of sections to study rather than three. You'll just have logical reasoning and reading comp to worry about. And of course, since logical reasoning is going to be two thirds of the test, any gains you make in your understanding of logical reasoning will be doubled across the two sections. Of course, at Elson Unplugged, we're still covering logic games in our live classes for students taking the LSAT in June, but we're also devoting additional focus to logical reasoning for those who want to give this section more attention, maybe because it's a weak area or because logical reasoning is going to be an extra section of the test, two thirds of it starting in August. So if you are studying for the LSAT over the summer, if you're considering studying for the LSAT and taking it any of the LSAT dates starting August and beyond, I'm going to recommend, of course, that you start by focusing on mastering the logical reasoning section. Once you do that, everything else follows, and there are actually a lot of similarities and overlap between logical reasoning and reading comp. In fact, some of the harder questions you'll see in reading comp are analogous to a type of question in logical reasoning. For example, you have parallel reasoning questions, strengthen and weaken, for example, among the toughest reading comp questions, the more inferential ones that require a bit more reading between the lines. And you, of course, you also have those types in logical reasoning as well. However, I wouldn't start with parallel reasoning. It's a relatively less common type. It's a bit tougher. And since everything is worth the same on the LSAT, I'm always going to recommend that you tackle your lowest hanging fruit first. So if you are studying logical reasoning, whether you're taking the LSAT in June, August, or beyond, make sure that you have mastered the most common question types like necessary assumption, inference, and flaw. They are more common than any other types of questions. And so you want to make sure that you've got those nailed down. You've got those airtight. So for example, for necessary assumption questions, you are looking for an underlying assumption, an unstated premise that is required in order for the argument to work. This means that you are not viewing the answer choices as containing new information, as some prep companies would have you believe, but rather you are looking for an implicit unstated piece of information that if you take the argument as given, you are also logically committed to believing. So in other words, if we take the stimulus, the argument, as given, as guaranteed, as not open to question, we are logically then committed to agreeing with all underlying necessary assumptions. This is why the so-called negation or denial test works. As one tactic, you could run through all five answer choices asking yourself, does this need to be true? If it were not true, what would happen? The correct choice when negated will destroy the argument, leaving no ambiguity at all, meaning that that necessary assumption needed to be the case in order for the argument to work. So in fact, necessary assumption questions are in fact a very specific kind of must be true question. Of course, I have many more LSAT strategies I can share. If you'd like to find out more about joining our programs, check out the links below to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out 
And in the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.